Welcome everybody and good evening. My name is Stephanie Goslin and I'm the Regional Director for Ovarian Cancer Canada for the provinces of Saskatchewan and Manitoba. And I'm joined this evening by our CEO, Elizabeth Baugh. So tonight you'll hear about the impact of your contributions and learn more about new strategies and directions we are pursuing to radically shift the course of ovarian cancer for good. I was super excited to see how many people had registered for this presentation tonight. Joining us tonight, we have women who are living with this disease, their loved ones, clinicians from cancer centers, volunteers who run incredible fundraising events in their communities, our volunteer government relations advocates, ovarian cancer researchers, corporate partners, and the list goes on. So I'm just gonna start um, with just a brief overview um, of tonight's agenda. And again, I just wanna thank each and every one of you for taking the time to join us this evening um, for our first ever town hall. So to start with, I'll give you a little bit of an overview on what's been taking place in Saskatchewan, Manitoba to show the impact being made in your region. So what will become clear throughout the presentation is that this impact is only possible because of you and you'll see how you're making such a huge difference. Then we'll consider some of the difficult challenges ahead and some of the realities of ovarian cancer. Importantly, we'll talk about some of the bold changes Ovarian Cancer Canada is making to address these challenges and to change the status quo. To ensure that we deliver on our promises, we'll take you through how we'll be holding ourselves accountable to these ambitious goals. And of course, we know that change takes a village and it's only possible with your help. So together, we will work to envision what your involvement might, might look like. So finally, to wrap up, we're gonna take your questions and Elizabeth and I will do our very best to answer those questions. So it's time for Town Hall and we wanna hear from you. So a few little logistics before we get started. Um, there are a number of people across the region participating tonight. So your phone is on mute to keep us all from talking at the same time. Um, you are invited to share your insight and ask questions on the, the chat screen, which is just in the bottom. Uh, of your screen, it's the little bubble. Um, if you don't see the chat screen, you can just look at the bottom in the middle of your computer and click on that icon. So we will also have someone keeping track of all your questions and comments. And as I mentioned before, Elizabeth and I will do our very best to answer them at the end of this presentation. If we don't have time to get to every question, don't worry, uh, my contact information will be up at the end of the presentation. And please feel free to send me your questions and comments after the presentation as well. Okay, let's get started. So this year we were proud to launch a new program, OV Dialogue. This is an online community where women living with ovarian cancer can connect with one another, regardless of where they live and regardless of what time of day it is. They have the ability to ask questions, share insights, and really to just let each other know that they're not alone. To date, we have over 400 participants, participants rather in this program. So super excited to have Flower Girl in our region. Um, Flower Girl is an ovarian cancer survivor, and she is also our very first volunteer moderator of this important community. She is an amazing person who gives freely of her time, not only helping to moderate this program, but also volunteering with the Walk of Hope and helping out with the support group. Together, we're calling on government to invest in ovarian cancer research, but we'll hear a little bit more about that a little bit later on in the presentation. So beyond what you see in this slide, people in our region have been taking to social media, sending postcards to the Federal Minister of Health and signing petitions to weigh in on this important women's issue. You will see in this slide that we well over 250 letters have been sent to the Federal Minister of Health from people in both Saskatchewan and Manitoba. And just a reminder, please, if you haven't set one yet, sent a letter yet, please do, uh, you still have time. You can easily send one by visiting our website all you need to do is input your postal code so that the letter is sent to your member of parliament and copied to the health minister. It'll just take a few minutes. So on a more local level, here in Saskatchewan, we are currently experiencing a shortage of gynecological oncologists in both Saskatoon and in Regina. In Saskatoon, we have one permanent gynecological oncologist who's here till the end of December. Um, they will be leaving in December, which will leave us with no uh, permanent gynae oncologists. And in Regina, where we have two gynecologic oncologists, one of those will also be leaving the end of June. So 
In a disease with so many uncertainties, the one thing that we do know is that current research shows that women who are treated and cared for by gynecologic oncologists have better outcomes and women in our region deserve the best treatment regardless of where they live. So we are advocating and working together with the Saskatchewan Health Authority and the Saskatchewan Cancer Agency to help rectify this situation as quickly as possible and to ensure that women with ovarian cancer continue to receive the care that they need and that they deserve. Um, in fact, earlier today, uh, myself and a group of survivors met with the Miner Minister of Health, the Honourable Jim Ryder, as well as the Minister of Rural and Remote Health, the Honourable Greg Ottenbright, um, to share our concerns and to bring forward to them the fears and concerns of ovarian cancer survivors in the province of Saskatchewan. So this is a busy slide. There's lots going on in our region, as you can see. This year, we held the third annual Lady Balls Show and Tell, an evening of the arts, and the first time the event was held in Saskatoon. It was a fabulous event with over 200 people in attendance, including the Premier and former Lieutenant Governor. This year's event raised over $29,000, and the first two years of this event happened in Regina. In total, it's raised over $111,000. People across Saskatchewan and Manitoba have organized events not only to raise funds for Ovarian Cancer Canada, but also to demonstrate to those impacted by this disease that people in their community care for them and what they are going through. And what I really appreciate about these events is that they're a wonderful reflection of the passions of local community, it's part of me, of local community members. They range from paint nights to teal games. We had a bunco tournament this summer and everything in between. Very important to us that those impacted by ovarian cancer have the critical, credible information that they need to help them through their experience with this disease and that they have the opportunity to meet with others who are walking down a similar path. In the past year, we have put on a total of seven workshops for women living with ovarian cancer and their families. Just in the past three weeks, we have had the opportunity to host a two-day workshop in Watrous, attended by over 55 people, as well, we've had the opportunity to host two separate workshops in Winnipeg, which were attended by over 85 women. Some of the topics on the agenda for these most recent conferences were Hope Heals, Dealing with Uncertainty, Cannabis 101, Exercise Therapy, Making Physical Activity Part of Your Life, Neuropathy, and we were lucky enough to have a Survivor AquaFit class when we were in Watrous, and we also did laughter therapy sessions in both Winnipeg and in Watrous. So as the Saskatchewan and Manitoba Regional Director, I do do my very best to stay connected with the local services and local leadership offering in-person presentations and promoting available resources to make sure people know about us. Community Road Trip. This is again, this was another fun weekend. Um, held every other year, Ovarian Cancer Canada is proud to help host the Canadian Conference on Ovarian Cancer Research, which brings together top international researchers, clinicians, trainees, and women and their families living with this disease. This year, the conference was held in Edmonton this past May. We were super excited to have 22 women and their caregivers from both Saskatchewan and Manitoba travel to Edmonton to attend and hear about the latest developments in ovarian cancer research directly from the leading researchers at the conference. One of the highlights of this conference was the lunch session at the Survivor Day of the conference. The women living with ovarian cancer were able to sit with the students and research trainees during lunch for a question and answer session. It was a super inspirational session for both the survivors to be able to meet the people who are doing this life-saving research on their behalf and also for the trainees to be able to sit and meet with the survivors that they're working so hard for and to learn firsthand the impact that their important work is having on having on the lives of women living with ovarian cancer. The Peggy Troscott Award of Hope celebrates and acknowledges the dedication of an individual or group who volunteers to support the mission of Ovarian Cancer Canada. Named after Peggy Truscott, a powerhouse volunteer and founder of the Ovarian Cancer Canada Walk of Hope, the award recognizes involvement, contributions and or achievements. I cannot think of a more deserving winner than Regina's own Anne Chase. Anne founded the Saskatchewan Ovarian Cancer Survivors Group, or SOCS, 
as it's more affectionately known, which over time has grown from six women to over 100 women. Anne was instrumental in bringing the Walk of Hope to her hometown of Regina. She has volunteered on the Lady Balls Committee, as well as countless other committees. She is a past board member of Ovarian Cancer Canada. And Anne is a tireless patient advocate, bringing the voice of survivors to the forefront. Anne was with me today as we met with the Honourable Jim Ryder and the Honourable Greg Ottenbright. Anne, you are truly an inspiration. So speaking of leaders in our region, um, Ovarian Cancer Canada's National Board of Directors recently welcomed Deb Clark, who is based in Regina. She's the Director of Communications at the Ministry of Finance, and the board also includes Suzanne Robertson from Winnipeg, where she is the Chief Operating Officer at the Canadian Museum of Human Rights. Because of you, no woman walks alone. Through it all continues to be a special place for women and families to gather in a circle of support. We have a total of three walks in our region, including Saskatoon, Regina and Winnipeg. These three are also three of the most successful walks in the country. In many cases, it's where women with ovarian cancer come face to face for the first time with others who know exactly what they're going through. I often receive calls from women just after they're diagnosed and they're often feeling alone and scared. And one of the things I always mention is where the closest walk location is to them so that they can connect and meet with others and feel much less isolated on this day of hope. This year, over a thousand people in our region walked in these three cities, raising over $220,000. So this is just a brief overview of some of the activities taking place in Saskatchewan and Manitoba. And before I hand this off to Elizabeth, I just wanted to take this opportunity to sincerely thank each and every one of you who has volunteered their time or donated vital research, or, sorry, donated vital funds because you have allowed us to support and advocate on behalf of those impacted by this disease. And together, you've made a tremendous impact. Now I'm going to hand it over to Elizabeth. Thank you, Stephanie. Good evening, everyone. More than 7,000 concerned Canadians in over 35 communities nationwide raised awareness and funds in support of the Ovarian Cancer Canada Walk of Hope. Together, they helped us exceed expectations, gathering donations in excess of $1.9 million, surpassing our national goal to raise $1.8. These funds are already being put to hard to work on the new strategic plan that we're pleased to share with you today. Because of walk participants, generous donors, as well as supporters, Ovarian Cancer Canada marked its 20th anniversary last year. This milestone prompted us to take stock and closely examine our priorities and where we stand to have the greatest impact as quickly as possible. There have been many changes in the external environment over that 20 years of time, including technology, community engagement, and knowledge about the disease. The entire landscape has changed, and so must we. In planning ahead, we looked at everything we were doing. We really want to make a difference. But what does that look like? Women with ovarian cancer and their families deserve to benefit from treatment advances and higher survival rates that have been seen with other cancers. We're committed to ensuring that ovarian cancer is no longer overlooked and underfunded. As a country and as a community, we cannot afford any longer to let ovarian cancer fall through the cracks. Few new treatment options have become available since the 1990s. This work continues to point to one hard truth that something has got to change. And Ovarian Cancer Canada is determined to be at the forefront of that change. To deliver, we need to be grounded in facts, look at what's working and what's not. So here's what we know. There's still no screening test for the disease and the community is hoping for early detection. Taking a look at evidence surrounding this approach, science tells us that ovarian cancer is not one disease, but rather a variety of diseases that behave very differently 
And because of the different subtypes of the disease grow and spread differently, it has been difficult to find a single screening test. As this research continues, we need to save lives now. As a community, we need to save lives now. We asked ourselves how, and this much is clear. Research is the only way to truly stop ovarian cancer. BRCA gene mutations are involved in about 20% of cases. So we packed all of our insights into what we now call our theory of change, an eight to 10 year outlook plan that shows what the future would look like if we successfully deliver. Here's what we know. Together with the community we work with and for, we are determined to impact the outcome of this disease. Going forward, we are increasing our contribution to research funding. We will ensure that women with ovarian cancer have what they need to thrive from diagnosis throughout their journeys. We will also work harder to reach families who are at an increased risk for ovarian cancer because of a family history of the disease. These impact points guide the organization's work to enable women with ovarian cancer and all others at risk for developing this disease to live further, better, and longer lives. To deliver on these bold changes, Ovarian Cancer Canada is going to shift from being the doer of all things to an instigator more now, narrowly focused on what we must do while working with partners so that they too can work to their strengths. An example of su such a shift is our move from general awareness to advocacy. By shining a light on the broader issues and talking to elected representatives, the community stands to benefit from substantially increased research funding. A consortium of leading researchers has already been assembled and they are prepared to act fast to prioritize investments in support of, impro of improved treatments. Three main pillars have been identified for this investment. Firstly, improved models to learn more about how ovarian cancer starts, progresses, and how to stop it. Secondly, advanced study of promising treatment strategies to address common issues in ovarian cancer and guide development of more effective treatment. And finally, to prioritize research on emerging treatments and to expedite potential treatments to clinical trials. So what you won't see in these plans is general awareness programming. Studies have shown actually that awareness of ovarian cancer is higher in Canada as compared to other places in the world. That said, talking only about ovarian cancer's vague signs and symptoms can be problematic. Noticing symptoms doesn't mean a woman has ovarian cancer, nor does it mean the disease has been caught early. We need to get more specific to underline what all Canadians need to know about ovarian cancer. We also got more specific about our plan and looked at a three-year strategy that will position us to deliver real change to women in Canada. Our mission calls for a focus on research. For scientific progress, significant funding will need to be invested both directly by Ovarian Cancer Canada and by the government. At the same time, women living with ovarian cancer must see improved care and support offerings so that they can live their best lives. Beyond this, information about prevention has to reach women who are at high risk of ovarian cancer and others who have opportunities to reduce their risk. Because of new research on prevention, this priority will launch next year. Overall, we continue to strive to engage more women and families living with ovarian cancer to provide support and continually rally hand in hand and shoulder to shoulder towards change. I trust that you are as excited about this new strategy as we are. Please share your thoughts and any questions in the chat box. You can access it by pressing the icon at the bottom of your screen. And from there, please type your feedback into the section that appears on the right of your screen. Progress is only possible with your help and support. It will take the efforts of the entire community to reach further and radically shift the course of this disease for good. Together, we can make it happen. 
With sites in Vancouver, Edmonton, Ottawa, and Montreal, the Ovarian Cancer Canada Tissue Banking Network gathers biological samples and data, in turn making these materials available to physicians and scientists studying ovarian cancer. Its extensive collection has been used by more than 450 projects throughout the country and, in fact, internationally. Current research projects being funded in partnership with the Cancer Research Society include a study by Dr. Yohiro Yamanaka at McGill University. He's exploring how high-grade serous ovarian cancer, the most common subtype of this disease, first develops in the fallopian tubes, what it looks like, how it develops, and how it eventually spreads into the ovaries. He's trying to see if there's a way to catch this cancer early. A project by Dr. Trevor Shepard at the London Regional Cancer Program, looking at whether a coping mechanism in cancer cells enables them to survive chemotherapy. Hope in this particular project is to see if the coping mechanism can be blocked to override chemo resistance, which becomes a problem for so many women. Research by Dr. Jim Petrick at the University of Guelph, who is learning about tumor blood supply, which is the vehicle for treatment delivery. In his work, Dr. Petrick will see if improving a tumor's blood supply can make treatment delivery more effective. This could actually reduce the required drug, dosage, drug dosages, leading to less toxicity and fewer side effects. The Canadian Conference on Ovarian Cancer Research is a unique meeting of the minds that was founded by Barbara Van, Dr. Barbara van der Heiden, the Corinna Boyer Chair in Ovarian Cancer Research, when there were only four researchers studying ovarian cancer. This biennial gathering has helped raise the profile of ovarian cancer research in Canada, and it's fostered one of the world's most collaborative and engaged scientific communities focused on the disease. We heard about advocacy from Stephanie, and I want to tell you that research is expensive and we need many others to pitch in to help support it. And that's why we met with Health Minister, Federal Health Minister, Jeanette Pettipaw-Taylor in October to discuss federal research funding. She was incredibly supportive at our meeting. We got to that point and reached that touchstone because 3,351 concerned citizens wrote to their federally elected representatives about the need for research funding. This is over and above the nearly 13,000 people who signed their names to a related petition that was read in the House of Commons. 38 advocates took to the corridors of power and met face to face with national decision makers in Ottawa on Parliament Hill. And because of all these efforts, today we are closer than ever to securing $10 million in federal funding to support more ovarian cancer research. Beyond this exciting momentum, Ovarian Cancer Canada has convened a vibrant community of women living with this disease. As Stephanie mentioned, today 428 women with ovarian cancer are registered to the online community OV Dialogue, where they can support one another, share stories, give and get advice. More than a thousand women received by your side or still by your side last year, resources for those facing a new diagnosis or recurrence. These free guides assure women know that they are not alone in their journeys with ovarian cancer. They bring together insights from women who have been there and the best available information from experts in the field. And we've also had 264 women on webinars or listen to them after when they're recorded. With these pillars of success, we're charging ahead measured and strategic in our next steps. And to deliver on this mission, I've described this bold mission. We are holding ourselves accountable for increasing research investments in research funding contributed by Ovarian Cancer Canada, but also in government and partner investments focused on the areas of priority. We're going to be accountable for improving care, starting with an evaluation of current ovarian cancer care in Canada and gathering feedback to further support women living with ovarian cancer in care related decision making. We're going to reach more people affected by ovarian cancer, increasing the number of women with ovarian cancer directly benefiting from or involved in Ovarian Cancer Canada programs and initiatives 
as well increase the engagement of their family and friends. We're going to inform women about preventive action, establishing formal recommendations on prevention, increasing genetic testing among women with ovarian cancer and those with a family history of the disease. We're investing for maximum impact and we're maintaining our high standards in fundraising and administrative expenses. Working with and for the community, Ovarian Cancer Canada is looking for your help. Change takes a village and we can't thank you enough for being so generous with your time and contributions along this journey. As we look ahead, Efforts continue to call for all hands on deck. These changes cannot help happen without your support. We're eager to know if you see yourself getting further involved, please, us, please let us know in the chat box. You can access it by pressing the icon at the bottom of your screen. And here's Stephanie Gothlin to tell you more about opportunities to get involved. Handing it back to you, Stephanie. Thank you, Elizabeth. Um, I love that last slide. That's a picture of uh, survivors in Winnipeg at the Walk of Hope this year. So just going to take a couple of minutes now um, to just go through some opportunities to get involved. Um, so government relations advocates, we've spoken a lot about government advocacy throughout the uh, presentation this evening. So this position uh, would meet and correspond directly with federal and provincial elected representatives and also engage in community in, sorry, pardon me, engage their community in government relations efforts. So an example of this would be um, what we did today in going to visit the uh, provincial minister of health or in meeting with your MLA to discuss the uh, concerns going on in, in your region. Um, OV Dialogue contributors also mentioned in the presentation is we do have some fabulous volunteers from our region um, that are that are helping out with OV Dialogue. Um, some of the things that are available to do with this position would be greeting new users and making helpful introductions as well as moderating discussions. Community champions. These are spokespeople for the organization and for um, Sharing stories with the media, always looking for uh, women who are willing to share their stories with the media. Also informing the public on the realities of ovarian cancer and what needs to be done. Walk leadership, I know we have uh, several people on the presentation tonight who are already um, do so much in this. Uh, so this would be planning and presenting with Ovarian Cancer Canada Walk of Hope in your communities and also working together with our team to bring about an event where women and families feel supported as they raise funds for programs and research. Social media ambassadors, engaging with friends and followers on social to reach more Canadians and encouraging the participation in advocacy and giving campaigns. Fundraisers, we've so spoken about several unique and creative fundraisers throughout both provinces this evening. So this would be co-chairing or organizing a fundraising every different size and shape, um, and also to help lead walk teams to successful fundraising. Finally, corporate champions, opening the doors to enable new connections within your company or professional network, and also testing or pitching opportunities for corporate sponsorship. So that brings us to the end of the formal part of the presentation. And we would now like to take some of your questions. So I have a question here. Um, and this is a question from Saskatoon. Um, very timely. In Saskatoon, we aren't going to have a gynecolo gynecologic pardon me, oncologist come December. What's being done about this? So I did mention a little bit earlier that we did meet today with the Provincial Minister of Health and we had a great meeting with them. It was very encouraging. Uh, they both were very well apprised of the situation. They have been in contact already with the Saskatchewan Health Authority as well as with the Saskatchewan Cancer Agency. Um, really working hard at recruiting uh, some new doctors who will be here for the long term. So looking in terms of uh, fellowships, uh, trainees, uh, scholarships, um, financial aid for some of these young residents who are coming in and who want to get into gynecologic oncology. Um, again, we just reiterated the fact that women in Saskatchewan uh, and Manitoba deserve the very best possible care regardless of where they live. Um, I have uh, one other question and it is in regards to clinical trials. 
So the question is sort of a two part question. The first part of the question um, to help women thrive, will Ovarian Cancer Canada provide travel bursaries so we can get to clinical trials? I'm happy to take that, Stephanie. I, I, this is a, it's a very good question. The need for access to clinical trials is indeed tremendous. However, Ovarian Cancer Canada is not equipped to fund travel bursaries on an individual basis because our support levels would have to be sustainable and equitable. But this type of assistance rightfully lives within the healthcare system, and that's why we continue to advocate so that women with ovarian cancer can receive the care they need regardless of where they live. The research investments that Ovarian Cancer Canada has directly contributed and influenced are already benefiting women across the country. I'm, we know that clinical trials are difficult to access, so how could, how could Ovarian Cancer Canada help people navigate them was the, the second part of this question. And many women are already in touch with our regional directors as well as our national programs manager with respect to clinical trials. It's very difficult to decode eligibility requirements and navigate through the, some of the online sources that are available, but we're working very closely with our partners to make clinical trials information readily understandable and looking at providing plain language information on our own website. So we hope that those things will take us a step close, closer to navigating this more easily. Thanks, Elizabeth. Um, I have one more question here. We need a screening test. Why is nothing being done about this? Great question. Uh, research shows that ovarian cancer is not one disease, but it's a variety of different diseases that behave very differently, so that a single screening test has been hard to develop. But it's not for lack of trying. There is a large-scale study out of the United Kingdom recently concluded that currently available methods are not specific enough to save lives. More time is needed to develop technologies that would support a successful screening approach. Elizabeth, I have a question here. Um, I'll let you answer. Uh, where do walk donations go? So our walk donations, and, and you know how important they are to everything that we do, they really are spread across all of the pillars of the strategic uh, plan that I've shown to you. So across research funding, across providing support to women and identifying where we need to advocate for greater support. And finally, as well, they will be put towards our prevention initiatives to get the word out to families that could actually prevent this disease. So that um, the funding goes across all of those pillars. Sometimes we have other donations for other areas and, and uh, so we are able to balance out and make sure that we stay strong across the whole mission. Thanks, Elizabeth. I have one more question here for you. Um, would Ovarian Cancer Canada consider creating a trial navigator to help patients from across Canada to have access? I see that's a great question from Krista. Um, certainly, uh, as, par as we look at this state of the, of the care for ovarian cancer in Canada, we will be looking at this as, as one of the challenges accessing clinical trials. We have been in touch with other um, organizations in other countries and have actually found out how they're helping their women who are living with the disease navigate clinical trials. There are a trial navigator would be one solution. There are also companies that will work with um, with survivors on a one on one basis and uh, they will help them find the one that's specifically with them. I heard recently that one of the conferences in the States, they brought that company to the conference and women had the chance to work one-on-one -on -one with them during the conference. So we'll be exploring how other people are doing it and how we can make it the very best it can be in Canada. Thanks, Elizabeth. Um, I have another question here from Saskatoon and the question is, why are gynecologic oncologists leaving Saskatchewan? Um, you know what, that's a very good question. We, uh, I can speak a little bit to this. Obviously I can't speak for them, but um, we know that there have been some system challenges um, here, in, here in Saskatchewan. Um, as mentioned, we did meet with the Minister of Health 
and remote health today. Um, they were made aware of some more of those concerns today. They had heard about some of them and are working very closely with the Saskatchewan Health Authority as well as the Saskatchewan Cancer Agency to address some of those. Um, everybody, of course, really feels that those problems need to be addressed from the ground up. Um, it's no point in having somebody jump on board tomorrow and if those problems are still here, they may leave as well in a year. So really working hard to solve those problems from the ground up and putting in a, a solid gyne gynecologic on pro sorry, gynecologic oncology program here in Saskatchewan. Were there any other questions? Janice, I know you are kind of looking after that. I see, sorry guys, I'm just... Question about an app for Ovarian Cancer Canada that helps women and others connect, learn, etc. I would say that um, that is actually our OV dialogue site is where women are connecting and sharing information and, uh, you know, fi learning from each other. I think uh, Buying from the Chill Store, you can do that directly from our website. Uh, but I'm not the app expert, so perhaps I'll take this question forward to our um, those who are in the organization, and we can um, try to understand how we could make those those things easier for you to access, Janelle. Elizabeth, there's a question here that I'm going to get you to ask answer. This is from Krista as well. And can you speak to the tumor banks being funded possibly in all provinces across Canada? And I know you recently discussed yeah, so this, so question. I'm handing um, it over. Yeah, I'm excited that you asked about this actually, um, I think a few months ago too, Krista, and I have explored it and there are indeed tumor banks in other provinces, I'm not sure all, but in a number of other ones that we are not funding right now. And so our research committee is going to meet before our next fiscal, which is April 1, and we'll be looking at how we could support those, what level of support they would require, because currently this is, not a huge investment from ovarian cancer that has an enormous impact. And so we feel that this is very doable. We just need to get the mechanism in place and connect with the right people. So I would, I'm very optimistic that come our next fiscal year, again, which starts April 1st, that we'll be able to tell you that we're funding many more tissue banks across the country. Thank you, Elizabeth. I have one question here, um, sorry, just in regards to signs and symptoms. So this is a good question and certainly uh, something that we, we have done in the past. If we don't talk about the symptoms, how will women know to get checked for ovarian cancer? The problem with talking only about signs and symptoms is that they're very vague, as we know. Most women at some point or another will experience bloating, difficulty eating, abdominal discomfort and changes in urinary habits. So while information about signs and symptoms will always certainly be available on our website and referenced in the media, it's also true that noticing these signs and symptoms doesn't necessarily mean a woman has ovarian cancer, nor does it mean that it was caught early for a better chance at survival. So we aren't focused on leading with the signs and symptoms, but we are emphasizing the risk factors so that women who are at an increased risk can take note and speak with their doctors about this disease. So those are all great questions. Um, Janice, I'm not sure if there's any more. I'll answer this question about um, awareness and education of ovarian cancer. I think that our new role in our new strategic plan will be to advocate for others to do much of this education work. For example, the College of Family Physicians, they've identified that family physicians say they need to know, know more about ovarian cancer. It's our job to demand that that be created, those programs move forward. And so I think that that is working with others, using their strengths, and using our advocacy voice will be our positioning for that going forward. Uh, 
Okay, I think I think that looks like most of the questions that have been answered. Okay, like I said, uh, thank you. We want to just thank everybody again for joining us this evening for our first ever town hall. We hope you found it sorry. We hope you found it beneficial and insightful. Um, and again, truly, we want to thank each and every one of you from the bottom of our heart for your inspiring and for your inspiring and advancing digital work. I want to just say a special thank you to KPMG. KPMG has been a long-standing and generous supporter of Ovarian Cancer Canada. And thank you to this amazing corporate champion for providing such a special opportunity for us all to convene together. Um, as I had mentioned earlier, if you do have other questions as you think of the presentation, uh, my contact information is on the screen. So please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, you can call me or send me a note via email and I will make sure that I get back to you uh, with the answers to your questions. So thank you again everyone for joining us this evening. Thank you so much for giving us this hour of your time. It's been a pleasure to share this great news about the organization and moving forward with all of you. Thank you for helping us get there.